According to past sa uh, car seat safety checks, four out of five car seats are installed incorrectly. Is yours? I hope not. I guess we're going to find out this morning. Lindsay Boach is actually joining us today right outside, and she is here with Jan Hummel from the health department. Yes, 80%. Uh, that's a huge statistic. So hopefully you learn a lot from this today. And if you don't, don't worry. There is a car safety checkup this Saturday. We'll tell you more about that in a little bit. We have our demo car. We also have Jan Hummel, like you said, Hannah, with uh, the Adams County Health Department. She is with Safe Kids Adams County. Um, and we're going to do a tub or a, a newborn seat, a baby seat right now. Um, what is the first step in making sure that this is going right? Well, this is an infant-only seat. It needs to be rear-facing. This one happens to have a base, and then we have the infant carrier. So what we're going to do first is we're going to install the base. That part stays in the car, and then we're going to put the, the carrier in. Okay, so that, that part's done, and you just put a safety belt on it? So with this particular seat, it locks at what we call the retractor. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the seat belt through here. It's a little bit harder with my gloves on. One thing that parents need to remember is that children need to be rear-facing until they are at least one year and 20 pounds. Recommendations now say that as long as the child still fits in the seat rear-facing, that they should stay in that seat until they are two years old. And now what is, I saw that four out of five are installed incorrectly. What is the, the one thing that you see parents not doing? With um, with infant seats, probably one of the biggest problems is that they're not putting the um, handle down. Okay. This is the carrier. So put the handle down. There's the carrier. So that fits in like that. Most seats need to have the handle all the way down. Okay. And the other thing that we need to remind people is that with um, infant seats, it, when you're driving and you have the child in the back seat, Sometimes if that child has fallen asleep, it's hard to remember that you have the child there. So obviously in this kind of weather, <laughs> we don't worry about hyperthermia, meaning kids get too hot, but we want to make sure that you always remember to drop your child off. And you have a, a good technique for that? Always put something in the front seat to remind you that the child is in the back seat. In the case of a woman, I would stick my purse in the back seat because I know that's something I'm going to take in to work with me or put a stuffed animal in the front seat, something to remind you that, oh, I have the child there. So we have this child in here. Make sure that the handle is down. Make sure that the straps are tight enough that you can't pinch them, and you're good to go. All right, sounds good, and we're going to do front-facing uh, car seats next. If you miss any of this, don't worry. It's all going on our Facebook page. You can log on there and find all of this information, and they, you guys are having a car safety seat check up Saturday. We have our car seat checkup Saturday, November the 12th. It's from noon to 2 at Central Fire Station here in Quincy. We have car seat technicians who will help you out. Bring your child, bring your seat, and we'll make sure that your child is riding as safe as possible. Great. Sounds good, Jan. Thank you very much. I'm going to send things back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Lindsay. A lot of peace of mind. I had mine installed. Uh, we got a new seat for my son. Uh, a few months ago, we went mm -hmm. to a car seat checkup, and Jan was there and, and some folks and made sure. And I just I drove out of there going, Okay. You breathe a little sigh of relief knowing that your little one's safe, no matter right. what. Especially mm -hmm. as a guy, you think you do things, you know how to do things. Sure. 80%, wow. And nothing is Big more number. precious cargo than that, so make sure and get that done. Off my seat. Parents, if you have a child who's sitting in a car seat or a booster seat, make sure you listen up before you take them anywhere this morning. We have some tips to make sure that they're riding safe. Coming up next. Morning. And something else that you may not know is if your child's car seat is installed safely, 80% of them are not. Safe Kids Adams County has been involved in car seat safety for more than 10 years. Oh, once a month it teams up with the Quincy Fire Department to hold a free car seat checkup. Lindsay Boach is live this morning making sure your kids are safe before you take them anywhere this morning. Hey Lindsay. Good morning guys. Yes, um, we talked a little bit about the rear facing car seats and now we're going to talk about the front facing car seats. Your child has to be one year and 20 pounds in order to move them to front-facing car seats. So I'm joined by Jan Hummel right now with Safe Kids Adam, Adams County, and we're talking front-facing car seats. What's the first thing that you need to do to install these? The thing that's most important is to figure out which belt system you're going to use. This one happens to be installed with the, what we call the lower anchors or the latch system. You can use one or the other, so you use lower anchors or the seat belt, not both. With the forward-facing seat, as we said earlier, we want the child to at least be one year and 20 pounds. 
recommendations are to keep them rear facing until two. So this child has now been turned forward facing. What is what is the latch? I'm going to stop you. What's the latch system? The latch system is the lower anchors and tethers in cars that are since 2005 or newer. Uh, and you'd have to read your owner manual. There are actually um, hooks at where the seat um, back and the seat cushion come together. And then you use, um, that's where you attach the seat as opposed to using the seat belt. So you use the lower anchors or the seat belt, not both. With forward facing, we want the straps to be at or above the child's shoulders. Think about it as being the same way as your own seat belt. We want to make sure that the chest retainer clip is at armpit level and that the straps cannot be pinched, okay? We want it to be that tight. When you check to see if any car seat is installed tight enough, you put your hands on either side of the seat where the belt path is. In a forward-facing seat, the belt path is here, so I'm going to put one hand on each side of the seat. If I cannot push it more than an inch, it's tight enough. So does this pass the test? This passed the test. Okay, okay so Chad's in good shape. Yeah. I made sure that it was good and tight, <laughs> and as I said, he used the, the lower anchors. Okay. Um, what is one thing that you see people doing incorrectly? Especially this time of the year, they're in big, puffy coats. We overdress our children. And what you have to remember is that if you have a whole lot of extra material, should you be in a crash, this belt is not going to hold the child as tight as we want them to be. So I know it's only in the 20s this morning. Put a light, you know, a light jacket, a fleece or something on your child so that there's not extra material there. And then put a blanket over them when they're in the car. Or once you get them in the car, put their, their, their heavy coat on them backwards. So we want to make sure that we have that belt good and tight against them. And again, you guys are doing a safety check this Saturday at the Quincy Fire Department. We will be at Central Fire Station, 9th and Vermont, here in Quincy from noon until 2 this Saturday. So come and see us if you have any questions. And you said that you guys get generally a good amount of people coming out. We do. We know that, you know, children change. We, we have infants and they're rear-facing, so when it's time to put them forward, um, people need, you know, that. So uh, we see a lot of people who come. We see a lot of pregnant women who come. You know, they're getting prepared um, before that baby arrives. All right, and next we have um, for older kids. If you're in your booster seat and you need, uh, you don't know whether or not you have the the right uh, equipment, we're going to do that uh, coming up next. I do have a quick question. If we have time, yeah. ask Jan. When since that is my son's car seat, when you buckle yeah. them in, sometimes you're in a hurry because they're fussy or whatnot, and the straps, especially mm -hmm. the lower ones, get kind of twisted. How dangerous is uh -huh. that? That the, the strap should be flat. Uh, Chad wants to know, sometimes Noah gets fussy and the, the straps twist. How dangerous is that, or should they stay flat? The straps should be as flat as possible. Um, yes, we know that the kids, especially the younger they are, they get a little fidgety and fussy. But the most important thing is that the child is as tight as possible in the seat and that they are restrained. When you talk about child passenger safety, you want the seat tight in the vehicle and the child as tight as possible in the seat. Okay, thank you very much, Jan. Mm -hmm. All right, thank that you, good, Lindsay. Chad? Life saving <laughs> information <laughs> this morning on your Thursday morning. 614 over to Parents, before you take your young ones to school, we're going to make sure that they're going to be safe when they get in their booster seat. That's coming up next. <laughs> Four out of five car seats are used incorrectly. That is according to the previous seat checks put on by Safe Kids Adams County and the Quincy Fire Department. That's a big number. It's a huge number. Pretty so scary. How do you know if your yeah. child's seat is properly installed? Lindsay mm -hmm. Boach is live this morning making sure your kids are riding safely. Yes, we did the uh, rear-facing car seats, we did the front-facing car seats, and now we're going to work on the booster seats. So these are for your older kids, um, generally the younger grades in elementary school. But we have uh, Olivia here. She's going to help us out, demonstrate this for us, and Jan, of course. Um, how old should they be when they switch from this front-facing to the, the booster seat? The rule of thumb is we don't move a child out of a seat until they've outgrown it. Most of your forward-facing seats go to at least 40 pounds. Some of them are going to 50. So once they outgrow that weight or height-wise, then we move them into a booster seat. Illinois law says you have to be in a booster seat until you've reached your eighth birthday. Best recommendations is you stay in that booster, obviously until eight, but until you're at least four foot nine or you can sit with your feet um, touching the ground. And we can see Miss Olivia is the prime size for a booster seat here. So what we have is a belt positioning booster. This is the belt positioner. The job of this is to bring the seat belt 
down across her shoulder instead of across her face. And Miss Olivia has told me that her parents have said that it's okay for her to buckle in. Because we still have this toddler seat in, that might be a little hard for her, but we'll help her out here. And what are some things that are important to remember with this booster seat? The thing that's important to remember is that the strap, um, that the shoulder strap needs to be on her shoulder and that the belt part um, rides low across her upper thighs, not on her belly. So we want this to fit her properly, and that's the point of this of the belt positioner. And now, what's one thing that you see people doing wrong with these booster seats? Uh, what I see people doing wrong is that they don't use the belt positioner, and then the belts are riding up against the child's face. Mm. Okay. Mm. And again, we also see that people are moving their children out of booster seats too soon. Like I said, Illinois law mandates that you have the child in the seat until they're at least eight years old. But that doesn't mean that all eight-year-olds are tall enough to fit properly. So she's going to sit here and uh, ride very safely to school. And what this does, it also helps her to, you know, not only fit in the car better, but she can see out better, too. And that makes it more fun. So you still have a few more years, Olivia, until you can get out of, of that. And now um, if people have any questions, they can come out Saturday to uh, Central Fire Station. That's right. We have a car seat checkup uh, this Saturday, November the 12th noon to two central fire station here in quincy ninth in vermont great thank you very much jan for joining us this morning thank you olivia for being our little model this morning as well um, and uh, we're going to send things back to you guys lindsay i do have a question for you um, actually for jan if a uh -huh. car is older and it doesn't have a seat belt positioner is there somewhere that you, are they able to be purchased or to be installed or um, can you repeat that, the beginning part of that question one more time? Sure. If, if a car is older and it doesn't have a seat belt positioner, um, you know, okay. installed in it already, uh -huh. is there if a way a that you can purchase one? If a car is older and doesn't or? have a seat belt positioner in it already, is there a way that you can purchase one? No, there isn't. Um, Illinois law, if indeed you have a really old car like my old Volkswagen and it doesn't have lap shoulder belts, mm -hmm. then you cannot use a booster seat. Uh -huh. You have to have lap shoulder belts in order to use a booster seat. Okay, That's great. Very Thank you very much, Jen. I didn't realize that. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Lindsay.